Welcome to another edition of Deep Thought Freud. Welcome, everybody. Whoa. <laughs> now right. I'm blurro vision. Cool. <laughs> Neat. It's always you a look new like surprise. You've been deep fat fried. Always sir. a new surprise. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's our new hook. We blur our cameras <laughs> out, man. We're the first people to do that. <laughs> we need to film like a really snooty on location like interview. It's like, look, you know, other podcasts. God bless want, you, auto focus. They want they want to be in focus. And we made the bold decision here at Deep Fat Fried to be out of focus. We subverted expectations by keeping the cameras. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, I love it. It turns auto focus on all the time. I have it focused perfectly. But it turns on the autofocus, and then it fucking puts me out of focus. It's like, yeah, you want us to focus on the wall behind you, right? That's the fucking focal point of this that shot. The, well, if, if, if Thank you, the wall, technology. I mean, you're not chewing any scenery here, too. Let's be honest. That wall is the star of this fucking show. wall. I mean, fuck. People watch this we show, just stand TJ. aside. Let the wall fucking Dude, shine. I heard, I've heard a lot of comments. I don't really mean to, you know, shit on you, TJ, but I mean, I'm kind of forced to. People say, like, the wall behind TJ, best part of every fucking episode. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I love, know that. They love that wall. But, you know, you, you got to fucking keep the wall in small doses, though. You can't just give them too much wall, because then it's like... How are they going to handle that? You know, that wall is pretty in your face back there. People really do love the background. So like every time, like, I mean, even our background right now is just pretty much fucking nothing. It's like we had fucking Zandalar. They're like, oh, look at that fucking weirdo. Let's look at the weirdo. What's in the back? Maybe, we, maybe that's what the show's missing now. We need like a weirdo. Yeah, we just need, I think we just need to hire like lurkers to hang out yes. behind us. I mean, we kind of do have a weirdo in the back. Who fucking kidnapped Chauncey? Look at him. Yeah, he looks kind of distressed. He looks like he's been handcuffed and... Oh, no, no, dude. That was his annual bone cleaning. Oh. He's good. Oh, yeah. Scotty loves to clean bones. <laughs> get it? Get it, Scotty? No, no, I don't. You get the joke, Scotty? You, you, it you get like, it? It sounded like a joke. So you I like don't... to clean bones, Scotty. You like to make sure the still... bones are nice and clean, Scotty. What? I don't get it, man. I'm sorry. Bone is like a penis, and you cleaning it is like you sucking on that penis, Scotty. I'm implying that you suck penises, Scotty. All right. Which you don't, in fact, do. So it's an insult to you, Scotty. Get it, Scotty? I get it now. Thank you understand you. the joke, Scotty? I do. Where's so, all this hostility? Yeah, man. From? It's a pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good, Scotty. Yeah. Right, Scotty? Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Scotty? You should always say my name like that. She goes, Scotty. Scotty. Scotty boy, where are you? Welcome to the Scotty House. All right. It's a pretty lame So house. today's... Is, I think you guys do refer to each other by your first names more than any duo of people on the fucking planet. You guys are constantly repeating each other's first names. What's that, Paul? <laughs> no. Like, when I say somebody's first name that I know, it's probably like, hey, what up, TJ? How's it going? I'm just arriving or whatever. And then maybe I'll sprinkle a TJ here and there throughout. But you guys will never start a sentence to one another without first going, Hey, Scotty. <laughs> Jesus, man. Or, it, it's because it's me and TJ both are very narcissistic and self-centered. So it's like the best way to get our attention is like, Say my name, bitch. You know, and it's this, like. Look at this impressive physique. Oh, yeah. Kiss the gun. Oh. Damn, dude, you're so inflexible, you almost couldn't do that. You're like, yeah. I uh, know, it's just uh, too much muscle. I'm just sorry, I'm too buff. I can't even get in the position because the muscle is so big. His traps are so <laughs> shredded. Uh, uh, <coughs> I can't even take off my own shirt. My lats are so fucking huge. Oh, yeah, brother. TJ, why don't you flex and bust out of that shirt for us? Oh, yeah, you want to... Flex and bust out of that shit. No, don't, don't, ruin your, don't ruin your shirt. Oh, yeah. This is a fishing shirt. What you shirt. gonna do when the Delaniacs run wild on you, TJ? Oh, the Delaniac. <laughs> Laniac on the floor. Sitting on the back of his Ford. <laughs> Now, I am probably the only <coughs> Delaniac on our uh, panel of three tonight. No, no, you're the only Delaniac on Earth. I'm the original Delaniac, too, though. I came up with the name Delaniacs. You did. He did. You did, Paul. You're very so, clever. I'm his number one fan. He's my choice for President of the United States in 2020. Hell yeah. John, I can do more push-ups than your dad, Delaney. Look, I mean, just look at this face right here, guys. It's I mean, beautiful. Fuck the face. Look at the physique. 
No, yes. Paul. Of the man. We're gonna look at. We're gonna look, Paul. He's got a, just a nice round face. Like it kind of reminds me of Homer Simpson. You know, kind of a Homer Simpson like figure. His his chin. It's a and slur. His neck. What, what? What? It's a slur. You're calling him a cartoon, sir. No, I'm not. When he's a physically fit specimen with the mind and the <laughs> will we need to pull us out of a dark hole caused by the most dangerous president, by the way, that we've ever had. Ever. Donald J. Trump. And there's one man in America one that can ra- rise to that fucking task, Scotty. And you don't. You wouldn't demean Barack Obama well, by you know comparing pa- him to Paul, a fucking. Since you're such a big Delaneyac. Yes. I'm sure you know uh-huh. Delaney's campaign slogan. Uh, I don't really pay attention to sloganeering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how convenient, Paul. You don't even know the slogan. You don't even know. Because no, a true Delaney act doesn't care about slogans. They care about results, okay? Results, not sloganeering. Well, Paul, you're, you're going to have your chance to defend Delaney. Well, hold on, tonight. Paul. All right, I'll give you a multiple choice here. Okay. All right. So... Um, is it a fair day's wage for a fair day's work? <laughs> okay. You think that's it? No. All right. Let's see. <coughs> it's not black is beautiful. I know you know that. Um, four new inventions. Is that a fucking campaign slogan? Uh, give me liberty or give me death, Paul. You think that's no. it? <laughs> um, I agree with Delaney. I agree with Delaney. That sounds like it might be it. I mean, it has Delaney's name right in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's actually focus on the future. Oh, a good one. Nice and bland and corporate. <laughs> Look at that. That's the way <clears throat> I Look at like that. It. Look at them guns, though. No, that's what I'm. <laughs> Look at that gun show, boy. Focus on the future. I'd rather focus on them fucking guns. Your future is getting bullied by Delaney as you're laying on the beach. He's going to come kick sand in your face. Yeah, you're like some 98-pound weakling to him, dude. So, TJ, you might not know this. John Delaney. Why is your phone farting? I I keep hearing it go. It's going insane, dude. Stop it. So, John Delaney was the first Democratic candidate to announce his intention to become the Democratic Party's nominee for president. Yep, he joined. He was in the race before yep. anybody. Uh, he was in the race before it was a race. So, this election, in many ways, will determine whether Trump is truly just kind of this political outlier in our system, and oh, or you know, are we going to have the Democrats kind of like they're going to write, they're going to write the ship, they're going to make politics sane again in America? Oh, thank we God. Don't, we don't know. I love sanity. But you know what, TJ? We're going to find out today why John Delaney threw his hat in the race so early. Why I'm running. This is his campaign okay. video. This is where he announced it all. This is where Delaneyism began. All right. This is the this is the way that Delaney this is the gospel launched of his Delaney. campaign. Focus on the future. John Delaney announcing that he is running for the highest office in the oh, land. Got chills and why already. he's going to win. It's going to be electric. Donald Trump is rude. The biggest he problem pushes with Trump people. is that he's not focused on the future, and he's not doing the things right we there. need to do Focus structurally on the to make our economy more competitive, to make our country more entrepreneurial, and to position people to succeed in that new economy that we all know is coming. Democrats can't win by just attacking Trump. We really so wait, the new economy is a auto mechanic fixing a car? That doesn't really seem like the new economy. Yeah, it kind of seems example. like the existing economy. Everything he's economy. shown is not the new economy. <clears throat> but right. he's out there. The working man is out there struggling, guys, and Delaney's there to hear his problems. All right. We have to show the American people there's a better way. We have to think about the future. America's going to win by recognizing what's going on across our economy and in people's lives and then focusing on what we can do. So uh, this, uh, whoever told you that, the, that you should go with this profile shot for this long and just like hold on it, not giving you great advice. It looks advice. like Homer Simpson on a $1 bill. It really does. Uh, yeah. Do collect Not a flattering angle. Make things better. Also, is, the is fact there a that, flattering angle? The fact Delaney? that most of your face is like hidden in shadow and you got these like deer in the headlight eyes going on, n- also not Dude, helping. when you've got a fucking bod like Delaney, you don't need a great face. Right, and he should be focusing on that. I mean, he's got a Like he should face. be doing push-ups while he's saying this. Yeah, he should be flexing like, his butt cheeks. You know, Trump really isn't focused on the future. You know what I'm saying? Yes. 
That's the American. Oh, dude, you know he could be like, he'd be like, we need a fit commander in chief. <laughs> Rip his shirt off, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. He could be like, Donald Trump isn't <laughs> fit for office. I mean, he'd be winning <laughs> if he used any of these ideas. We should be fucking John Delaney's goddamn campaign managers, man. I've been I've been angling for it. Why dude. does no one ever utilize our genius properly? <laughs> God damn it. John Delaney is a force of nature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why I pulled this. I was gonna see if you guys. I was gonna see if you guys found it, dude. But I, 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 last time I was, dude, I'm redoing. Really I'm doing the research, and I had to stop when I heard that. It's like, did I hear that right? I had to rewind. It's like John Delaney is a force of nature. Yeah, maybe an overcast I mean, day. Dude, look at the document. Look what I put in the document. Even he, that's the only note I What'd put. What'd you say? He's a force of nature. <laughs> He's a force of nature. He's a fucking tornado <laughs> of charisma. He's a tsunami of ideas. Dude. God bless Delaney! <laughs> Woo! Delaney! Delaney! Lord Delaney! Delaney, Delaney. Lord born. Delaney! Australia suffers with these oh, fires! Delaney. Please you send love rain! Delaney! Delaney. Of, course. Do you love Delaney? of course, he's a, he's a force what of nature! Do you think of Delaney? He's a force of nature, TJ. When it started raining in Australia recently, it was Delaney casting his like <laughs> Delaney powers on them. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Delaney is a, a force of nature the same way. Uh, like an ant fart is a force of nature, but okay. He's a force of nature. Ooh. He's a force of nature. She got paid, TJ. <laughs> Doesn't matter, got paid. He can tackle things no one else can tackle, and he can make progress on issues. I mean, she is that... true about that. I mean, I, yeah. I, bet, I bet he can tackle many more things than your average person can tackle. He looks like a tackler. Yeah. That other people get daunted by. John just simply doesn't have an equal in his ability to tackle hard things and make progress. <laughs> There's nobody. No All one right. can equal Delaney John. needs to go full bald. <laughs> he needs to get rid of the side patch. You're thing. definitely it right. It just looks weird. <laughs> it looks very clownish, you know? Yeah. Do, 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 it does not help. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So get rid of that shit. <laughs> Maybe consider fucking doing something else with the eyebrows or like getting some fucking <laughs> sunglasses in that head or something. Get some sunglasses. That would help. Yeah. Then you wouldn't have these like sad St. Bernard eyes. You know what I mean? They're dude, just the truth is everything on his face is cartoonish <laughs> in its own way. The truth is, dude, is that just based on appearance, John Delaney, like I think honestly, as, as as rich as he is and as hard as he's tried, if he was a little bit better looking, he might have three percent in the You could dress it up too. Just take a white pencil and trace those brow lines and make like a little beach scene with seagulls flying away from the you know yeah, the yeah, sun. Yeah. And I have three seagulls holding holding different positions in the air. <laughs> Just make an art piece out of that or something. Yeah, Put a dude. hat on. Hat. Yeah, a hat's a good idea. People listen to John and they say, I can... Hat with sunglasses on it. Yes. Yeah. Sign up for that plan. So a motorcycle now. helmet no, I, I with the that. visor go down. Back, go back. <laughs> that would do it. Look, look just, just go. You have to rewind. What's we'll the last thing she said in the video? Oh, my God. It's so long. Okay. People listen to John and they say... I can sign up for that plan. Well, apparently not. If the plan because, is his uh, campaign, then no one's <laughs> signing up. Basically, I, I, there was an article. Well, you, you pulled it, probably. It's so a, on balance, it's the end of global this, trade uh, reshaped the, uh, and improved video. our country cool. and the world, but it Another didn't show. help everyone, and no one stood up to make sure entire communities weren't decimated and those hurt were helped. The back Why does he look like he's about to be run over by a truck? <laughs> I know, right? He him. looks like there's someone just off camera with like a fucking AK-47. Like, your door is told. And then you say, that he, it's like, what <laughs> the fuck? Is he a Kremlin plant? Is this fucking Putin just off screen? Like, our new President Delaney <laughs> program will be great success for John, Mother Russia. John only so irrelevant. No one even accused him of being a Russian asset. Dude, look what's on that box behind one. the guy. <laughs> Are you Are the international you symbol Russia, for Russia? Russia. Country, the people who built our nation and saved the world were tragically ignored. Now there's another big wave of global change happening. Yeah, what is that? Look at the fucking suffering of that stock photo. <laughs> fucking people looking over bills, man. Technological innovation and automation are reshaping well, he's the economy. a corporate guy, jobs. so all he knows is how to make these, like, step up. corporate pitch videos. Oh, doing the swelling fucking score. <laughs> It's got the same shitty, nondescript, I mean, pseudo-epic music just, behind it. Just look at the screen right now. I mean, just look at this face. He I mean, looks like... Preston Deer in the headlights. He looks like somebody just whipped their dick out. Started, <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Hey, upset. John, what do you think about this? <laughs> this is the face I'd expect someone to make if a bear just walked in the room. I mean, this is like... 
What? <laughs> or this if a like, bear walks into the room and whips his dick out. Yeah. Or he just took a massive <laughs> shit in his pants. A you know? grizzly bear just whipping his dick out. To like, not just lady. a little Hershey oh. squirt, but like he went to fart and it was a what whole turd. What the hell turd, is going on here? You know, like enough to elevate him off his chair a centimeter or something. <laughs> Looks like he maybe just heard he lost all his money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> he looks like a guy. Dad, he looks right broke. Now, he looks like a guy that just got the worst fucking news, man. John Delaney right Corp is nothing anymore. The Republican solution is to divest healthcare, training, education. That's a backwards approach. So anybody who thinks that, uh, like, uh, the score can like get any worse, <laughs> make a scene happen. Look at this case. Doesn't it look like it It just followed John? I'm afraid to tell you you have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, <laughs> well, what are my options? Like, why does he look like that? <laughs> While telling us all these great things he's going to do for us. Republicans. It's actually time for the real things we need to do to grow our economy and wages the American in every flag. country. It's time for a new social contract that builds a cleaner, safer, stronger and more just society. Wow, what a bunch of platitudes. <laughs> Cleaner, safer, stronger. What a bunch of platitudes. It's time for us to do some good things to solve the bad things. Positive adjectives about what society will be under me. <laughs> Cleaner, safer, stronger. <laughs> yeah, all the positive ones. <laughs> Sure, dude. So yet again, the strong one, he can be like stronger, and he can do like his little fucking. Yeah, he should have ripped his shirt off right there. <laughs> stronger. And did the the <laughs> peck strong jiggle like dance? Me. I know he can do the left right peck jiggle oh, dance. Oh, you know oh, yeah. some dude like this. Dude. He should have an American flag tattooed across his chest that waves as he does it. You know? Yeah. Do yeah. you do you know what John Delaney needs, man? He needs more of like a shit kicker thing. Like he needs like an American flag polo shirt, like unlike what he's got now. He needs a oh. cowboy hat on his fucking head. The flag, that's brilliant. That doesn't look like seagulls on his head. That's the stars and stripes, oh, dude. Yeah. Paint one white, paint one red, <laughs> paint one white. You know what I mean? <laughs> Throw some stars on that shit. <laughs> that he just truly is the clown we all see him as. John grew up the son of a union electrician. Hard work, decent pay, health care, a pension. He understands what that means for a working family. It was a union scholarship that helped John afford why did the all? Why does that woman look like she's about to pick your pocket? <laughs> Not this, but the footage of her. What the you got she's there? got a different kind of look. She's got Let's the look see. of a person that's trying to figure out how to get out of the building with your Pain, purse without her knowing. Care, pension. He understands. <laughs> look at her. Well, that's his wife, Paul. <clears throat> I think she's just squinting because her eyes aren't that great. What the fuck is going like, on what here? What does it say? What, is, what, what do I have to read in the teleprompter? Because <laughs> they... <coughs> Sorry. Are you allergic to Delaney? I guess I am. <laughs> Maybe I have the coronavirus like, oh! or something. Get that oh, fucking man. Delaney virus. Get out of here with that <coughs> coronavirus shit, dude. Get Don't your coronavirus. Get it. Get it and die. I just started listening to the stand, dude. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Captain Trips, motherfucker. Nope. Um, no. No, uh, 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 I think, you know, it's like... They can't have an unscripted, honest moment of people just talking about each other. So they got they have this teleprompter in front of her, and obviously she is too vain to put on glasses or whatever the fuck. So, so she's like, "I love my husband, John Delaney." <laughs> it's so true. She she looks like she's drunk on her way home from a social event, and the cop is shining his fucking flashlight in her face Hello. as he's got her pulled over. Hello, officer. My, my what is this all about? what that means for a working family. It was a union scholarship that helped John afford college. In building two businesses from scratch, John succeeded by working with others, like his dad Why didn't he did succeed in getting a site. full haircut? He though. builds teams, he's creative, he's gotta get rid of that. and he's a problem solver. <coughs> and he's always it looks worse than every time they show John. And ethical values. We worked with John back in 2004. The strategy was to, to grow ASG. It was a challenge for the larger banks to finance a company like yeah, this is this is the struggle America relates to right here. Yeah, we would just need access to the uh, the credit uh, markets as a corporation, and uh, John Delaney believed us and made an investment. Wow, things are just you know everything's great now. Yep, everything's great. It's just a lame testimony of why John Delaney is the greatest hey, guy. He led our, you know, this, he led our soulless corporation where you see all these people in cubicles behind me. Uh, you know, he really helped us get off the ground. Good so job. I think he can do the same thing for America: a cubicle for every man, woman, and child. These like are all the ways that I got Jones. rich. And I want to continue to get rich. <laughs> the only way that's going to happen is if you make me the most powerful person in the universe. I'm John Delaney. He is a force of fucking nature. 
All right. Well, uh, is that enough of this video, Scotty? I think so, TJ. Okay. I don't think we need to touch ourselves with the whole five minutes. Here's a... Uh, wow, that's only five minutes? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wow, it's only five minutes. Holy fuck. How many of these head wrinkles does he have? He's get he's getting one, more. One, two, They're three, stacking up. Four, five, six... Dude, if, Seven, if he gets eight. one or two more, he's going to look like a Klingon. I know. He's turning into a fucking Klingon, dude. <laughs> like, literally one or two more wrinkles. John, okay, I called it. John Delaney is a Klingon infiltrator Kapla. on this planet. He is the first wave of a Klingon invasion. Explains the physique. Yeah. I think we, we're dealing with a Klingon here, people. We so, got we to gotta fucking we gotta send a message. I don't want to, <coughs> you know. As you guys know, John Delaney. I don't want specific, but, you know. John Delaney announced, I mean... <laughs> and that this is astonishment, I actually found this out. John Delaney announced 1,194 days before the 2020 election. Which I, is three years, three, three months, months, and six days. Correct. Uh, so this is one that, so Delaney's talked about his strategy, about why, like, you know, that's why I started so early. So in many ways, I'm running an old-fashioned kind of uh, style campaign. The best analogy to what I'm doing is what Jimmy Carter did in 1976. In 1974, the New York Times wrote a story about 35 people likely to be, uh, to be the Democratic nominee for president. And Jimmy Carter wasn't on that list. But what he did was get in really early and spend a lot of time in really important states. In another interview, Delaney said of the campaign's approach, at this point, it's a very personal campaign. It's focused on meeting as many people as possible. I am pursuing a bit of old-fashioned strategy in some ways, which is meeting the voters. Um, so Delaney has also recognized his campaign uh, faces, quote, difficult odds. I know what I'm getting into. Obviously, this is a very significant undertaking, <coughs> but I really do believe I have something to say. So just like the guy in Tiananmen Square where he stood oh, in front of the tank, mm. didn't really quite know how he was. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, I'm sorry. wait a minute. I'm sorry. Hold on. Wait is this a, a quote? Now. Yeah. Uh, it is. He thinks he's like the okay. guy in Tiananmen so, Square. Yeah, yeah, so just like the guy in Tiananmen, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, in Tiananmen Square. Oh, that's an that's a when he stood in front of the tank, man. didn't really quite know how he was going <clears> to beat <throat> the tank. I understand running for president is a huge challenge, but you know, I'm ready for it. Mm. This idea, like this Jimmy Carter strategy he employed, um, clearly not work. I mean, like, I understand the thinking behind it when he did it. Okay, that makes sense. Get in or you, you don't no one believes in you. You don't got the name recognition, so get in super early and try to fucking, you know, build this true grassroots campaign right. around you. Just get everyone that meets you is like that guy needs to be the next president but of the United States. It didn't work and no one wants you, so what are you still fucking doing? Cuz he hasn't dropped out. To so what is day? So what is the one of the big metrics? We always talk about like with president fundraising. Trump, it's it's got to be fundraising. It's how many people are giving you money. Big corporate donors, fucking the average person. How much money? It's are you polls raising? and it's fundraising yeah. for sure. So we've heard about some totals, impressive, really impressive totals. So Bernie, so on January second, twenty twenty, the Sanders campaign announced they had raised thirty four point five million in the fourth quarter of the last year from one point eight million individual donors, close to ten million more. Than the twenty five point three million raised uh, in the third quarter, so Bernie's up hugely. Why does Grandpa Bernie still look so disappointed? Because we should have done fifty million, Paul. <laughs> Damn, you can't please Grandpa Bernie. How about this guy? What a booty judge, TJ? Jeep Pooty Judge. Twenty four point seven million from South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Booty 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 Judge. Hey, you know he's gonna spend it all on gay sex. Hey, it's his money. He's gonna point. spend it all on his sinful look, gay butt sex. If they donated the money. It's up to him to use I am how sickened, he sees fit. I am sickened to the core of my being. What about, uh, oh, there's the teeth popping out there. Uh, Joe Biden raised. What about your creepy uncle, yeah, Joe Biden? $22.7 in 2019's fourth quarter. What about John Delaney? Oh, Delaney? What about Delaney? <sighs> now, obviously, we, we don't have. Uh, uh, Eight dollars? Ninety <laughs> trillion dollars. The gross national product of every country was donated to John Delaney to ensure. That he ascended to his right. So the most place recent information I could find was from July 2019. July, huh? Yeah, John Delaney drops another 7.7 .7 million into his campaign. <laughs> That's a lot of the, dough uh, that got donated to John Delaney. There, the former Maryland congressman loaned himself another 7.75 million this quarter, 
$7 million of which came just three days before the close of the books, according to a new campaign finance report filed on Monday. Delaney raised only a little more than 284000 between April and June this year, far less than the $1.9 million he raised last quarter. Damn. I mean, so he was able to do this to <coughs> 1.9, but now it's like hardly anyone's giving him money. Probably it's got to from- be one of the biggest one-time donations to a campaign ever. Yeah, think about that. And think about that. This uh, this Delaney guy thought that Delaney's campaign was so solvent that he was willing to loan him <laughs> that much money. I How mean, really, that just shows a tremendous amount of faith in Delaney from right. this other guy who's also named John Delaney, right. apparently. So, no coincidence only, of course. So Delaney, who has been the biggest television ad spender among 2020 contenders, reportedly uh, spending more than $11 million this quarter. But, on, but only a little over $2 million of what actually went to his campaign activities. $9 million was a loan repayment for himself in April. Delaney has poured nearly $20 million of his own money into the campaign so far this year. Just insane. So basically, Delaney's raised like a few million dollars from other people's money, but for the most part, he's put at least $20 million of his own fucking dollars into this race. This, this fucking picture is making me want a corn dog in the worst way. I want that big mustardy corn dog. I've never seen a corn dog eat a corn dog. So that's kind of like a. (laughs) Maybe you should sell corn dogs. Yeah, maybe. He looks pretty good next to that corn dog. Maybe instead of being president of the United States, he could become (coughs) president of corn dogs. So, I mean, as we saw, you know. Ooh. And and I pulled this one for Paul. Nice. Mm. (coughs) You know, he. That's 40 pounds. That's not a lightweight. In his announcement. The lady's like, look, I'm, you know, the fucking common person in this country just got left behind. Robotics can replace all their jobs. No one's listening. No one gives a shit. But I do. And he definitely does, TJ. So Delaney's net worth totals over $90 million. Won't for long. He keeps spending all this I mean, fucking I, I guess not. campaign. Uh, he said he was able to finance his campaign through the Iowa caucuses and the Jersey Hampshire primary. Uh, so he's an average guy, TJ. He only ranks sixth among the richest members of Congress, right. according to his 2016 financial disclosures. Yeah, only sixth. Uh, while running uh, healthcare financial partners, Delaney was the youngest CEO of any company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. We've all had a similar background. Man, TJ. So it's been a few years since Delaney announced, right? Yeah. I mean, look, he's put his own money where his mouth is. $20 million. I mean, 20 million fucking big ones, dude. He's, he spent a lot of money. He's been the first one on the ground. He's campaigned tirelessly. I don't think anyone has invested more time and money and effort into this race than John Delaney, man. I mean, he's, I, I do and as we right. know, in America, hard work he, he's been to pays e- off. He's been to every county in Iowa. Oh, hell yeah. It's amazing. So how's he doing? How is he doing, Scotty? Hmm. Oh, man. How's he doing? Look at him. He's so beautiful. Let's see. Uh, so here's his no. fundraiser. Oh, no. What's going on? <laughs> Greater than 1% of every fucking dollar that's ever been made? That seems like a winning statistic to me. So John Delaney has never topped 2% in the polls. Currently, less than 1%. CNN, Monmouth University, less than 1%. Quinnipiac University, 0%. Nah, dude. Zero. According to Delaney Mathematics, <laughs> when the open end of the bracket is towards the number, it means... Not to ignore the number that comes after it and assume 100%. Yeah, and then add 100. Oh, wow. That, that's crazy. So you even see here, uh, total eventual contributions, $1.2 million. Total spent $20.8 million. Cash on hand, 548000 So that's what, tw- if you're a, that's what $20 million of your own money can buy you. Uh, Less than 1%. 0% in the polls. Congratulations. Awesome. Uh, I didn't poll it, but on Real Clear Politics, he was polling nationally at 0.5%. <laughs> And, of course, as we said before. I mean, that's no, going to go up. At no time and during the race, from the time he entered till now, has he ever exceeded 2% of national polls. Like, I think he was maybe at 1% at some point. So, John Delaney has a theory, you know. He, it's not fair, TJ. Just someone like John Delaney just hasn't had enough exposure. Voters just haven't got to know him. Yeah, that's true. So that, I think it's time I think if it. the voters knew who Delaney was. We uh, visit the next article and we play a little video and. Learn why. Play this. Yeah. Wire Sunday on Close Up, John Delaney says his bid for the presidency, launched almost three years ago, wasn't helped by 2020 Democratic National Committee primary rules, which he believes put a premium on candidate notoriety. Effectively yeah. creating what I like to call the social media primary before the Iowa caucus. Oh, that's the problem. Is that fucking social media? You know, he's just not popular enough to be president. I mean, imagine that. Imagine <clears throat> it's, not a, it's not a popularity contest, right, guys? You don't need notoriety to become president. 
Hampshire primary. And I think that was unfortunate, and I think the democracy loses because the voters here in New Hampshire, just like they are in Iowa, are very skilled at figuring out candidates. Not Delaney not. says his grassroots that's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, if they <coughs> that's the reason you're polling it under 1%. I mean, you excite nobody. You have, I mean, like, your focus. Look where he's speaking. Look at that fucking. I mean, see, look at this. You never get to see this because, but like, because they actually came out here. Like, look, he's speaking to an empty fucking room. There's probably 10 people in this room. There's a guy who is not, who's clearly not even here to listen to Delaney, who's just kind of like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> What's going Iowa on here? In New Hampshire have been hindered by his absence from the national. Hey, there's a fucking actual crowd. A lot of empty seats in that crowd, though. Yeah, but at least I mean that's more people than I'd expect to listen to John Delaney since talk this summer. But in these final weeks, the tables could be turned somewhat as big name senators have to forego the campaign trail to stay in Washington. Oh yeah, this is Delaney's chance, dude. That's true. Well, my time is now, guys. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the number one for the impeachment trial. Uh, and all of them are going to have to sit silently through many, many hours of testimony uh, of, a, of a trial on the impeachment of President Trump. In a kind of <laughs> it doesn't matter, dude. Circumstances, they would be out on the road almost full time. But Delaney doesn't see much of an advantage to be gained. From the political He's standpoint, right. do you think this gives you a little bit of an opening being on the ground in Iowa and New Hampshire to try and no. get your foot in the door? No. Well, Adam, I don't really look at it that way because I think the work they're doing is obviously incredibly important. And I think people will see them doing that work and, you know, they'll have an opportunity to talk about their campaign and I'm sure they'll get up here. So I don't really think that matters. I think what really matters is my message to voters and the fact that I'm out there campaigning as hard as possible. What is that message again? Uh, what's, the, what's the Lenny's message? Like, hold on. I'm a bland corporate shill. No, no, no. Really, what's the Lenny's message? What is it? Uh, from what I've seen in researching him, the thing mm -hmm. he primarily talks the most about is trying to help the common person, TJ. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll say that. What's his specific, like, what's his signature uh, legislation or plan or policy talks, or whatever? I think besides Andrew Yang, he's one of the only people to mention automation and the threat automation has to a number of jobs. So he, his, his, the mere mention of automation is his ace in the hole, I guess? I mean, he's pretty progressive. If you look at his policies overall, like... <clears throat> Except the universal health care, because obviously he, he did start a health care company, so it's like, no, we should can't get rid of private insurance, but I believe universal health care at the same time. So it's mm. kind of a weird tap dance around that one. Okay. Um, beyond that, I mean, just the same kind of shit you see, like invest in infrastructure, give Amer the average American a better deal. Hmm. I mean, we can go to his website if you want. I've been there before. We looked at it before. The Delaney platform. I mean, I'm already on it, really. If I'm here, over here, here. I mean, we got some kind of big ideas. Let's see. Uh, better health care. Climate change. Climate change. Oh, wait. Fixing no, no, no. Our Not better health care, TJ. Better, better care. care. Better care. With no space. So like a slogan. Better care. Oh, better my God. Better care sounds awesome. Look at this. He's wearing, he, this thing looks like a clown nose on him here. <laughs> oh, you're right. It does. All right. Here's his plan. This is healthcare plan. As president, That's important, I'm right? Going to ensure it's a major a issue. Universal healthcare system, where every American gets healthcare as a basic right of citizenship. I think it's a human right, and I think it's smart economic policy. And I believe we can do this. You know why I believe we can do this? Because France has a universal healthcare system. Germany has a universal health care system. Okay. Sweden has a universal health care system. Let me just pull this right from Bernie Sanders. The Netherlands has a universal health right. system. Right. Everyone has it. Got it. And we, the United States of America, Don't. can also have a universal health care system. <gasps> but you know what those countries, which many of us admire in terms of how they deliver health care to their citizens, also have in common? Is they do not have a single-payer universal health care system. And that means there's different ways of achieving universal health care. Sure. I believe my plan is the best. What's it's the plan? Better care. Okay. It gives every American a basic health care package as a right of citizenship for free. We take the Medicaid program, which is insufficient in many states, and we roll that into it. We leave Medicare alone because it actually works and our seniors really like it. But we also allow our citizens to have choices. Oh, my the God. American people like choice. <laughs> If they don't want to use their basic better care package, they can opt out and buy their own private insurance or get supplemental plans like Medicare. I'm Medicare guessing there's a lot of pretty critical shit that best. won't be strictly covered <laughs> Dude, under this better is, care. Well, here's the thing, too. is you, like a quagmire. Basically, you create a two-tier system, and the fucking thing you risk in that situation is, you know, you ba the government system basically becomes an afterthought. 
It's not properly fucking, you know, well, it's financed not, or covered. It's and not it, an it equal ends up being to your system. Right. It, ends it up, makes more money on the upper end, so they get the better care. Right. It ends up being the garbage system that, you know. Yeah, you get the garbage with, coverage. People with actual money don't pay into it. They want to pay into a better system. So then that system doesn't have the proper funding and it just deteriorates. I was really talking about like a fucking three tier system. He's saying, oh, when you're 65, then you just get Medicare. But then before, you can either choose a private plan or you can have this government basic plan. And it's like, what? So you're, you, so you're basically offering people all these different fucking choices. It's like, that's not that, that's not going to make our healthcare system simpler. It sounds like, it sounds like it's going to make it more complicated, if anything. But people love choice, Scotty. It's like he's, it's like he's, he's like dipping a toe in like all these different sorts of like healthcare systems. Like, we're going to have universal healthcare, but we're not going to really have it. But we're kind of going to have it. So I thought we'd conclude this uh, John Delaney section with TJ with a, an uh, article we talked about. So this is called um, John Delaney is Still Running Why. This is something that appeared in The Atlantic about four or five days ago. And this kind of, if you kind of wonder what it's like if John Delaney approaches you, how would that, what would that feel like and how do people react to that? So John Delaney is here at dusk on a Friday night in January because he's still running for president. Did you know he was running for president? Probably not. Well, we all know. We love John Delaney. I guess this here. is the picture supposed to be up here. Sorry. Uh, if you did once know, Delaney was actually the first candidate, blah, blah, blah. We'll skip that part. So basically, the, the first part of the article is like, Delaney's running, but everyone kind of knows that Delaney doesn't really have much of a chance of winning. I mean, it's kind of clear. He has one. no chance. Of winning. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if everyone else dies suddenly, and I don't know. Uh, so today began with an event at a pizza place in a small central Iowa city of Montezuma which 12 people attended. This evening, the door knocking starts at a house across the street from an old telephone company building. No answer. At the second house, a light in the front of the hall illuminates a Christmas tree, but no one answers the door here either. Third house, also no answer. Finally, <laughs> people won't even answer the door <laughs> for Delaney. Finally, at the fourth house, a man wearing pajama bottoms <laughs> answers the door. After listening to Delaney make his pitch for six or seven minutes, he says, he, well, he's uh, committed to voting for a Democrat in the general election. He's not playing the caucus. And that, and that was about it. He'd probably go with Andrew Yang if he had to make a choice, though, because he likes Yang's proposed freedom dividend, his signature policy providing a guaranteed basic income of $1,000 a month to all Americans. It quickly became evident that Lenny can't get this vote, but courtesy dictates that he now listens politely while the man talks about how he wants to fix up the shed across the road. <laughs> so he's like, I this guy, like, we're going to fix the shit over there. <laughs> this fucking little fucking bum. This is a winning out. strategy here. It's a 1976 Jimmy Carter strategy, Paul. How dare you say that? So after that, Delaney's small caravan, a big blue and red bus trailed by a car, rolls on. Noah's home at the next two houses. When a woman pulls into the driveway of the second house, Delaney campaign's manager tries to talk to her, but she walks in the back door and doesn't come out again. <laughs> 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 Everyone in this area is like, shit, Delaney's out again. Up a hill and around a corner is another house that the campaign staff have identified as belonging to a Democratic voter. An old man opens the door. He says he's recovering from eye surgery, but he doesn't like Donald Trump and is happy to talk. Finally, a prospect. He says the main thing he's looking for is a can and a candidate is honesty. Delaney makes his pitch, but the man is soon trying to wrap up the conversation. Hope you do well, the man says. Delaney, <laughs> Delaney invites oh, that's him. the worst burn ever. <laughs> Delaney invites him to a free dinner that the campaign is hosting the next town over. The man just smiles noncommittally. <laughs> I love this. That, that story is the greatest. The, the old man who's like, well, the most important thing to me in a candidate is honesty. And then John Delaney launches into his little like stump speech. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, okay. Hope you do well, sonny. Hope you do well. Good night. Good, goodbye. Dude, uh, is he, he sounds like he's effectively haunting that community. He is. Yeah, the ghost of John Delaney's campaign still haunts this this community. I mean, he's just going door to door like a fucking bad like vacuum cleaner salesman pitching his goddamn substandard bullshit. And everyone in the town is just like, oh, okay. Like, they're literally cornering people. Like, like, like the article, it mentions a woman, like, pulls into a driveway and they're like, hey! And she just runs in oh, back. Oh, shit. The old man that's like just recovering from eye surgery has got nothing better to do. Is like, oh, here's bullshit. It's Fine. been it's been over twenty years since I moved away from Oakwick Corners. 
but I still wake up at night in cold sweats hearing Delaney pounding on my door. I want to talk to you about moving the future forward, he'd say. <laughs> oh, since chills down my spine. I think we'll be reading articles like literally in like 2022, like Delaney still running for president in 2020 race. I can still win! <laughs> oh my God, what a sad state of affairs. But this whole episode's not about Delaney, right, Scotty? No, TJ. Now we're going to talk about the media bias against Bernie, dude. Pff, media bias against whatever, Look dude. at CNN, ABC, MSNBC. Ain't no bias. Ain't no bias. Fox you mean the total hand job everybody's constantly giving Bernie in the in the national news media? Is that what you mean, Scotty? Yeah. The constant positivity that they are heaping upon this man, rightfully so. Yes, that is exactly what we're going to talk about. How everyone loves Bernie. Yes. We subverted the audience expectations yet again, TJ. This is Woo! about how the media loves Bernie. The media is way too fucking much in, in uh, Bernie Sanders' pocket, I mean, it, pocket, it's if ridiculous, you me. if you ask me. So every week, we cover news stories on our show, Flash Fried, which I know definitely, Paul, is your favorite day of the week. Absolutely. When Wednesday rolls around, Paul just comes in here clicking his heels. Can't wait for the news, fellas. And week in and week out, it seems like a lot of coverage of Bernie Sanders is generally spun in a negative or misleading way. And now that Bernie has surged in the polls in early states like Iowa, New Hampshire, and nationally, the gloves are starting to come off. To be clear, I'm not here to say everything that's written about Bernie is negative. But that overall, there seems to be a clear bias against the ideas that he champions and attacks that paint Bernie supporters as a bunch of angry neckbeards who just never want a woman like Hillary to be president. I mean, true for me. In essence, to say that Bernie's candidacy has had a spoiler effect on the outcome of the 2016 election. So right. here's kind of like we're gonna Ralph co- Nader syndrome. Yeah. I mean, because that's basically what we've we've heard so many times. If the Bernie birth came out, then Trump wouldn't be president. Amen. Amen. So TJ, why don't you go here? This is our old pal Bernie. I like it. Uh, go on to the next one, please. Okay. So the Washington Post, picking up where they left off in 2016, runs four negative Bernie Sanders uh, stories in two days. So this is basically, you know. Bernie announcing Bernie got joining the race, and it's just like, you know, and I actually pull up in the next one. This is actually 16 negative stories. So this guy points this out here. This is a fair dot. Uh, Washington order. Post ran 16 negative uh, stories on Bernie Sanders in 16 hours. Can Damn. we see them all? Let's see. No, I guess it's too big. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's, there's too many. There's too many of them. Well, I'll read some. You what, can read some of the uh, headlines there. Yeah, a what lot of Bernie are... Sanders still doesn't get about arguing with Hillary Clinton. Mental health patients <laughs> to Bernie Sanders don't compare us to GOP candidates. An awkward reality for Bernie Sanders, a strategy focused on whiter states. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, two big lies about the global economy. Bernie Sanders says white people don't know what it's like to live in a ghetto about that. Here's something Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders have in common. Why Obama says bank reform is a success, but Bernie Sanders says it's a failure. So, another interesting thing here is MSNBC's anti-Sanders bias makes it forget how to do math. Let's see. What happened? Uh, When MSNBC legal analyst Mimi Rocha said that Bernie Sanders made her skin crawl, though she can't even identify for you uh, Uh, what exactly it is. Creepy. She was just Uh. expressing more overtly the anti-Sanders bias that pervades the network. Uh, The hostility is so entrenched, in fact, that it seems to have corrupted MSNBC's mathematical reasoning and created a new system of arithmetic. The cable news network has repeatedly made on-air and online mistakes about Sanders polling and other numbers, always to his detriment and never with any official correction. Here are some new rules MSNBC seems to follow when it comes to math and Bernie Sanders. Uh, so 1.49 per, uh, you know, 1.49. No, 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 that's oh, oh sorry. Oh, that's the, Four, I get it. Yeah, so 49. So 49 is uh, <laughs> less than 48. Yes, exactly. Uh, MSNBC made a handy graphic for a poll on July 7th that showed uh, 2020 matchups against Bernie among Democrat voters. The list was in descending order of candidates' polling numbers, except for Bernie Sanders, whose name is placed under Warren and Harris, though he polls higher than both of them. Yeah, so there here you we go. S- so this is going up against Trump. So th- there you have it. So Trump 50, so Joe Biden 53%, Trump 43%. So basically, because they knew that if they put Bernie 
there, you see him at second. So they want to put him, push him down. So it's like, okay, even though you know these both have forty eight and he has forty nine, we're gonna we're gonna push him down a little bit. And they do it again. So Sanders goes from second place to third place. Huh. So let's see here. Five is greater than seven. Yeah. So Bernie's at fifty percent, and Warren's above him. Uh. Okay. Man, well, Warren. Do- Warren's number two. Fuck you. How brazen. Uh. They didn't even change the math on the graphic. Yeah, plus they just f- moved him down. I know. Yeah, plus, plus five equals minus five. Yeah, Bernie's down. Uh, so apparently they... Yeah, since last 20 Democratic was- matchup polls since last polls released. And they say uh, Bernie's down five in all of them. But, but he's apparently actually he's actually up five. So Oops. Oopsie again. Whoops. Oh, we meant, we meant plus. Oh, Bernie's down, even though he's not. 25 equals 28. Yeah, uh, there you go, dude. Support among non-white voters. And it it just continues. I mean, you just keep scrolling. Uh, less than $200 equals zero. Of course. What's this? Rachel Maddow on uh, April 29th did a segment and tweeted about a study on the gender of campaign donors. Unfortunately, she forgot to say the study uh, she cited only looked at donors who gave $200 Whoops. or more after praising Gillibrand for doing... Doing the best in terms of targeting female donors, Maddo urged her viewers to look at the other end of the spectrum. Just strikes me as unsustainable. Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg, look at them. Both of them are raising twice as much money from male donors as they are female donors. 66 and 67% of your donations are from dudes. Dude. Yeah, and what is the, you know what the average donation of Bernie Sanders is? It's like $27. So just admit all those people. Oh, no, they don't exist. But, oh, look, a bunch of dudes. It plays into our narrative. So he was vastly out- uh, raising K- Christian Gillibrand. They just omitted all of the lower end, which is what, you know, he's got a, like a big populist. The same Open Secrets him. report Matt I was citing explained that its results were skewed since Sanders has the highest amount of money coming from small donors at 74%. So 74% of his donors. And generally, are- only donations above $200 are itemized. The gender landscape of small donations are absent. So just a total fucking fabrication. Uh, 23 minutes equals five minutes. Result, Sanders goes from highlighting his opposition to racism and sexism to not mentioning them. In March, MSNBC's Alex Witt hosted a panel to discuss Bernie Sanders' March 2nd campaign kickoff speech. Panelists and MSNBC political analyst Zerlina Maxwell said, I clocked it. He did not mention race or gender until 23 minutes into the speech, which who cares anyway, but... As Sanders surrogates, journalists, organizers, activists, and people on Twitter pointed out, Sanders most definitely mentioned race and gender five minutes into his speech when he said the underlying principle of our government will not be racism, sexism, xenophobia, homophobia, and religious bigotry. Sanders starts his speech 31 seconds after he goes on stage uh, to be charitable to critics, but he doesn't mention gender or race until five minutes and 31 seconds. So just another fabrication. And uh, Maxwell's a former Clint- Hillary Clinton staff. Oh, right? Really? Shockingly enough. You don't say, TJ. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Crazy stuff. I mean, TJ, you're telling me that there's some sort of bias or misrepresentation or it's misleading? How can you say that? It's such a weak criticism, too. It's not even he didn't mention this at all. It's It's like, oh, he didn't mention it He didn't mention it quick enough in his speech. You know, if he really cared, he'd have mentioned it real lickety split quick, you know? So this is more about, you know, so obviously a lot of people view MSNBC. uh, Can you put that image up, TJ? Yeah. Which one? This one? Yeah, this one. MSDNC. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people were talking about this. I've like really they took a deep dive into what because a lot of times these misrepresentations have come on MSNBC, which is reportedly the liberal network. Mm hmm. So nonetheless, a new and systematic look at MSNBC's recent campaign coverage offers an astonishing and empirical snapshot of the media bias Sanders is facing in his quest for the Democratic nomination. So here are things. Uh, among other things, Sanders received far less coverage than either Joe Biden or Warren. In its August and September coverage, by total mentions, MSNBC talked about Biden twice as often as Warren and three times as often as Sanders. Uh, by number of episodes, 64% of the 240 episodes discussed Biden, 43% discussed Warren, and 36% discussed Sanders. A quarter of episodes only discussed Biden, compared to 5%, and only 1% that mentioned only Warren or Sanders, respectively. So just clear, you know, uh, need for the fucking fairness doctrine again. Oh, which, of course, was gutted long ago. Uh, When the network's talking heads did mention Sanders, their coverage was almost likely to be critical in tone. Negative mentions of Sanders far outstripped those of Biden or Warren, with the latter receiving the highest number of positive mentions. 
Of the three candidates, Sanders was the least likely to be mentioned positively, 12.9% of his mentions, and most likely to be mentioned negatively, 207 The remaining two-thirds of his mentions were neutral. Warren had the lowest portion of negative coverage of all, uh, of all three candidates, just 7.9% of all her mentions, and the highest proportion of positive mentions, 306 they love them some Warren. So it's like, when like, I talk about Bernie, it's like, he's a piece of shit. So MSNBC's determination to frame Sanders' campaign and its prospects in the least favorable light emerge in a number of ways. Deploying familiar tropes about electability, obsessing over poll uh, results, and the network's coverage frequently portrayed Sanders' proposals as unrealistic and lacking in detail, suggested his campaign was losing steam, even when the available evidence indicated otherwise, and boosted demonstrably incorrect claims about the demographic breakdown of his support. For example, in a later episode, Matthews in The Roots Johnson claimed African-American women were leaving Bernie and breaking for Warren, even though a Pew Research Center poll that week showed Sanders' base to be the least white, 49%, of the leading four candidates, including Senator Kamala Harris. Warren's whitest was whitest at 71%, and all four had about 50% women supporters. So just lying about who Bernie's base is, saying, oh, no, no. Oh, all the black women are leaving Bernie Sanders to go to Elizabeth Warren, even though... She's the you least know, diverse. The statistics actually say the complete opposite, and she's actually the whitest of the four major candidates. But and her supporters, yeah, whitest support, yeah. So it's just crazy. They, so Bernie's been painted by that by Warren and Hillary and all these other people. When the, actually the but opposite. But how is about true. Scotty, the vaunted paper of record, the gray lady, the paper of note, the New York Times. Ah, oh, the most vaunted of American institutions. And I think, as a, oh, as an the aside, New York Times. I would like to speak in favor of the New York Times' bold, courageous, and visionary idea to not endorse simply one candidate for president. Ah, oh, yes. But to endorse two pre- candidates for president. Amazing. Brilliant. Brilliant maneuver. Uh, the next image of us has, this is uh, Sidney Ember. Uh, so in July 2019, Katie Halper, writing for FAIR, reported that Sidney Ember, a New York Times reporter assigned to cover centers, was regularly citing criticism of the candidates by his ideological opponents. Moreover, wrote Halper, many of the experts that she forced interviewed to talk about centers are corporate lobbyists whose work in, uh, the, in a particular area is not guided by academic, journalistic, or other professional standards, but by economic and political interests of their clients. Ember was citing these sources as neutral authorities without disclosing their potential conflicts of interest. Shocking. I know, it's so shocking that the New York I Times... I can't believe it. So in July 2019... Here's, a, here's the opinion of a corporate lobbyist being, you know, uh, vaunted as like, hey, this is uh, just a neutral observer. Yeah, let's ask this uh, neutral party here uh, what they feel about Bernie Sanders' uh, health care campaign. He's uh, just a, an expert in, in this uh, particular field. It'll bankrupt us. We'll have hospitals closing left and right if we get universal health care. Oh, no! So in July 2019... Uh, Hopper documented a number of instances in which cable news network MSNBC employed graphics that distorted polling and donor, uh, and donor data to Sanders' detriment. Uh, Politico put forth the idea that Sanders' campaign perception of bias may be an artifact of Sa- uh, Sanders' propensity to decline in formal interviews at press gaggles after events and his reluctance to focus on breaking news. At the end of the month, Sanders' campaign manager, uh, Faiz uh, Shakira, or Shakira? Shakir. Shakir was invited to CNN's reliable sources to talk with Brian... <laughs> Brian <laughs> Stelter, Stelter, motherfucker. Oh, God, Brian Stelter. About media bias. Uh, Shakir criticized uh, debates and talking heads, uh, spots on networks like CNN as being interspersed with pharmaceutical industry commercials. Uh, when asked what issues the campaign wanted to dis- uh, discuss more than daily dissection of Trump tweets, Shakir spoke of regulatory capture, which is basically when special interests run the government. Or this it's a special interest override the interest of the public. Oh uh, yeah, that doesn't happen though. This is America. The people will decide, Scotty. The people. Oh, you guys remember this, don't you? I don't it remember. Wasn't it. too long ago. This. Oh yeah, this is when Bernie refused to shake Warren's hand. I remember that. Right. S- what a scumbag. Can't believe he did that. Yeah, Warren went out and reached her hand out to Bernie, and he was just like, psych. So this was a pretty big story. This was like the whole thing that like popped off. We even missed it when we were watching the debate live when Warren just went up to you know Bernie's like you. I think you called me a liar and refused to shake his hand. I think you called me a liar on national TV. So this is where it all started. This is where the smears started. So you can pull up the next one. So CNN is the one that ran with this, and this is Bernie Sanders tells Elizabeth Warren in private 2018 meeting that a woman can't win. Sources we, say. Yeah, and these are sources. Oh God, sources, man. 
and we've already kind of discussed this, but this is basically just they had a meeting and sent and Bernie Sanders was like, look, a woman just can't win. It's not going to happen. And this is according to Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and of course, this did only came out just recently. So kind of convenient, but whatever. And uh, well, who wouldn't you know who sponsored the last debate, TJ? Hmm. Can, can you can you let me know who was the, the sponsor? Let me think. Can oh, think? it was uh, CNN, wasn't it? Oh man, it's you happen to be right, TJ. So the CNN sponsored debate, and that was the most. I mean, like you want to talk about media bias against Bernie Sanders? Anybody? Like any? The only thing anybody has to do to realize that is watch that fucking debate. Well, we're gonna play part. We're gonna play oh, that, okay. uh, that, uh, a clip of like of the probably the worst moment. So the CNN sponsored debate between Denic- uh, Democratic candidates on January fourteenth, twenty twenty. Well, the subject of criticism over perceived bias against Sanders. Perceived bias. Yeah, especially concerning moderator Abby Phillips' handling of a he said, she said controversy between uh, Senator Sanders and pre candidate Elizabeth Warren. So here's the exchange. We've seen it, but we'll watch just the very beginning for people that might not have seen it. Let's not turn to an issue that's come up in the last 48 hours. Senator Sanders. CNN reported yesterday that, and Senator Sanders, Senator Warren confirmed in a statement. That in 2018, you told her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Can't do it. Why did you say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. Uh, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this because this is what Donald Trump. Now, why did you say that? Did you say that? Media why wants. did you say that? Uh, anybody knows me knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Go to YouTube today. There's a video of, the, of me 30 years ago talking about how a woman could become president of the United States. In 2015, I deferred, in fact, to Senator Warren. There was a movement to draft Senator Warren to run for president. And you know what? I said, stayed back. Senator Warren decided not to run, and I did did run afterwards. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by three million votes. How could anybody in a million years not believe that a woman could become president of the United States. And let me be very clear. If any of the women on this stage or any of the men on this stage win the nomination, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's me. (laughs) But if they do, I will do everything in my power to make sure that they are elected in order to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of our country. So, Senator Sanders. Elson, her question. Senator Sanders, I do want to be clear here. You're saying that you never told Senator Warren that a woman could not win the election. That is correct. Senator Warren, follow up. What did you think when Senator Sandju- Sanders told you a woman could not Sanju. win the election? <laughs> the whole crowd. I mean, like, it's laughable. It's, a, pe- it's the, a groaner. The people in the crowd are laughing at it. Even the candidates both react negatively it's to like, it. <sighs> oh, come on. How do you feel when, when when he said it? Why did you say it? Then how do you feel when he said it? Did you feel bad? I mean, I've already fucking raged at this. I know like, a number of times, and, but I mean, like, and I don't, I don't. When we're talking care. about Bernie Sanders, fuck anti media uh, bias it against has to be Bernie played. Sanders, like you can't not play this clip because it's just it's required. I mean, it's it's fucking required reading. I mean, like this is just like fundamentally everyone in the crowd has the same groan reaction of like. <laughs> what? That's what we had too. We we're like, what is this? It was the most unreasonable fucking question I've ever seen put forth. Like, in a fucking televised fucking presidential debate. I don't think I've ever heard a stupider moderator question than that. So, the criticism came not only from Sanders' campaign and his supporters on social media, who made it CNN as trash trend on Twitter, but also from journalists and political analysts from a wide range of political perspectives, uh, such as Matt uh, Tabby from Rolling Stone and Steve Cortez, uh, CNN's own pro-Trump contributor. So, a lot of people are kind of like, this is fucking stupid. And another thing, uh, they had Warren as a snake. It was interesting enough when we did that flash ride. We tried to put that hashtag on there, and it would not not just put Warren as a snake. Oh, that's because it's sexist. Can't do it, man. So I just want to clarify, Mr. Sanders. You're saying you had nothing to do with the horrible, brutal slayings of Elizabeth Warren's entire family in 1982. Is that correct? That's correct. I had nothing to do with that. Mrs. Warren, how did it feel when Bernie Sanders burst into your home and brutally slayed (laughs) your family in front of you? It's like, what? So, uh, in a journalism think tank, uh, Pointer Institute <laughs> lambasted Phillips' treatment of Sanders, describing it as stunning in its ineptness and stunning in its unprofessionalism. 
I would agree. Uh, and then, of course, we, I didn't pull this one, but we all saw this too. Uh, following the exchange, Joy Ann Reed argued that Sanders was lying during her morning show on MSNBC. Oh, the fucking body yeah, language by, expert bitch. By interviewing a self styled body language expert who was later found to be an opponent of vaccination. In her explanation, the guest. And a creationist, by the way. Yeah, she was. In her explanation, the guest referred to Sanders as being hunched in posture, which critics, including Greg Greenwald, condemned as anti an anti Semitic trope. Oh, so shit. it's like he's a hunched over little like little goblin there. I mean, in fairness, <laughs> Bernie does he tend to be hunched. kind of hunched over. So I mean, always <laughs> rubbing his hands together, figuring out ways to get your money. Money, <laughs> we've got to have. <laughs> what money. am I going to do? Ah, 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 I am Bernie. So, T, we don't have to look far to see this, dude. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, I pulled, I just pulled a bunch of articles. I think most of them from the last week. I'm pretty sure maybe two weeks, but these are very recent articles about Bernie. So former Obama campaign manager calls Bernie Sanders the worst candidate to beat Trump. Oh, really? Former Obama campaign manager Jim Messina called Senator Bernie Sanders the worst candidate to pit against Donald Trump in the general election. Messina told MS, I'm sorry, MSDNC uh, that the qualities that make Bernie Sanders appeal to youth voters may most upset, I'm sorry, may most be most hurtful to him. In a general election, MSDNC contributor Mike Barnacle, <laughs> I guess so. Mike Barnacle attributed Sanders' appeal both to his consistency and message. The message is basically: you can live your life for free. We'll have free college tuition. We'll have free this. We'll forgive your student loan debts. He said it's a powerful message. Yeah, that, that's the yeah, Bernie that's message. It. That's Everything it. You nailed it. free. Everything free. Go to McDonald's. Free cheeseburger. Actually, that'd be pretty cool. I'll run on that. Yeah, she just like uh, Messina. I talked myself into it. Messina said the message that Barnacle cited as the reason Sanders wouldn't fare well in a general election against Trump. The former campaign manager said uh, he worried that the message would get him killed in a general election. I don't think there's a question about it. Messina said, "I think it's very clear to me that with these swing voters that I care about, the Trump Obama voters in the Midwestern states." Bernie Sanders is not the candidate right. we need to so, beat Donald Trump in November. So go up to the top. Let's see, let's see the date this was written, TJ. Or put out. Okay, so. Uh, 12320. Okay. Go to the next article, please. The next article? Yes. Bernie Sanders leads Donald Trump by widest margin of all 2020 candidates. Election poll. Uh, so this is from one day before this. This is Newsweek. This is Newsweek. This is one day before. So. <laughs> One twenty two twenty. Bernie Sanders leads Donald Trump by widest margin of all twenty twenty candidates. Election poll. He's gonna be killed. Next day, worst candidate to beat Trump. Wow, what 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 a difference a day makes for Newsweek, man. The day before, like, eh. Senator but Bernie they sneak Sanders out the positive stuff that can't be fucking ignored, and then immediately follow it up with some negative. So that's the. Yeah, and it's, to and it's totally contrary. So uh, Senator Bernie Sanders leads President Donald Trump by the widest margin of all candidates in the Democratic Party's 2020 race when Americans are asked to choose in a face-off against the Republican incumbent, according to a poll. Survey USA asked 4,069 registered voters nationwide how they would vote in an election today if Trump was pitted against each of the 2020 candidates in the Democratic race. The progressive Vermont Independent came out on top. The poll found that 52% of voters would choose Sanders and 43% Trump giving the veteran senator a nine-point lead. Next was former President Joe Biden at 50% to Trump's 43, a seven-point lead. And it just goes on and on. But it, it just shows you. It's like there's literally an article written one day before that's like, Bernie would do best. Then you have some fucking Obama, former Obama campaign surrogate going like, he would get creamed. Worst one. Worst one to run. Can't even believe you'd even try. The way he's always topping all those polls. I mean, nobody ever wins off that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what the hell? Come on. Oh, man. Let's go to the next one, please, TJ. Okay. You're the boss. Bernie versus Obama. Is that Burn what we're Obama. Doing? Yeah. Burn Obama. Obamni. So there's some rumblings that have been heard. You can go to the next one, please, TJ. Sure. Oh, actually, you know what? That The one that was supposed to be there is... Is it there? It's not there. Oh, shit, dude. It's not there. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think you just pulled a picture yeah, I, of it. I, I, I just pulled the quote. Excuse me. That, that's why. You didn't pull the so That was mine. Uh, so uh, this is about Obama talking shit about Bernie and private. So this is right? from an article entitled Obama fuels Sanders is unfit to battle Trump. And he is told and he has told people he might do so publicly. So this is a quote from that article. Obama has told people in private that Sanders both temperamentally and politically unfit to beat Trump in the 2020 general election. 
These people say, among uh, the, his concern are Sanders' strident form of politics and confrontational manners where he was not known to seek compromise during his long years in the U.S. Senate. I think that's what appeals. Yeah. Meanwhile, Obama is said to worry that Sanders' far-left policies, which include massive tax increases, free college tuition, and massive student debt forgiveness, would alienate even traditional Democratic voters and may alienate them enough to re-elect Trump, who is now seeking a second term despite historically low favorability given his own bombastic style. Uh, with that, Obama's way in a more forceful rebuke of Sanders as the candidate Oh, as the candidate to lead the Democrats in 2020, according to the people who have spoken to the former president. It's unclear if Obama will name Sanders specifically, if he does indeed decide to make a statement, or if he will address the matter in more general terms, as he did in November. Obama may also decide to remain silent, particularly if Joe Biden, his former vice president, or Warren begin to overtake Sanders in the early primaries and in polling. So it's like, okay, as long as there's a centrist corporate Democrat shell, then we don't even. Then Obama can just stay out until one of them wins that. But if Bernie Sanders starts to get ahead, Obama I needs mean, to trot to. out and be like, "Oh, listen, uh, Bernie Sanders is a crazy uh, lunatic, and uh, you can't. Uh, he's trust an infiltrating him. Jew. We're scared. I Trying think that uh, he's uh, all the money out of your pockets. He's a Kremlin uh, plant. A and, Russian uh, asset. You know, he's hunched over, and you can see he's uh, rubbing his uh, hands together. Right. And uh, I don't want to imply anything. <laughs> You know, anti-Semitic, but uh, uh, his nose, no, I want to come right out and say, you know, money grubbing Jew, but, uh, you, know. you know, draw your own uh, well, conclusion. Yeah. If, if the glove fits. So Sanders will play dirty. Ex-Vermont governor. He slam. will play dirty. I mean, that's what you think about dirty. No, I wish he would. <laughs> that's my main complaint dude, that's is that he won't. That's why I call him Dirty Sanders, dude. Oh, yeah, the I mean, Dirty it's Sanders. Dirty Sanders. You want a Dirty Sanders? It's like a sex move. It's like somebody <laughs> oh. somebody wrote this article on opposite day. You know what I mean? Like, this is literally the opposite of what Bernie Sanders does. Bernie he Sanders. refuses to play dirty <laughs> to, the, to his detriment sometimes. Even in times when it's so fucking called for to play dirty. He won't do yeah, it. Yeah, Democratic. He uh, won't do it. Democrat Pete Shumlin, who endorsed Joe Biden, weighed in on the disagreement between that. So that's just them. So a former Vermont governor, an ex-chair of the Democratic Governors Association, is taking aim at Bernie Sanders in his campaign, accusing the senator of trying to quote Hillarize Elizabeth Warren. I love that. That's a. a uh, <laughs> I yeah. love that's a derogatory th- term. It shows me that they know internally <laughs> that, that Hillary, Hillary Clinton sucks. is tarnished fucking goods. Oh man, he's trying to Hillarize her. This is more party bullshit. So basically, he warns that Sanders, an independent and self-described Democratic socialist, ultimately did not feel loyalty to the Democrats. What I've seen in Bernie's politics is he and his team feel holier than the rest. In the end. They will play dirty because they think they pass a purity test that Republicans and most Democrats don't pass, said Shumlin. What we're seeing, I think you're projecting your own yeah. fucking feelings about yourself on well, this. Not only shit. that, but if you look at what they're saying about Bernie here, they're basically describing all of the positive things in a lot of people's minds yeah, about like, Bernie. <laughs> this, He's outside this is the of appeal. beltway politics. He refused to fucking compromise when you know these certain uh, issues came up. He, he's not a typical glad-handing, you know, fucking part of the Democrat apparatus. So he's, like, framing it as if it's negative, but I know a lot of the people that follow Bernie, they follow him for that exact reason. Because he has, like, a long-storied uh, career, political career, of being a guy that was not... Principled. He wasn't sucking the dick of either yeah. party. He's he was willing pandering. to call out the party when it was wrong. I mean, totally. That's why he's an independent. <clears throat> uh what you're seeing now is, in the end, even if he considers you a friend, like Elizabeth Warren, Bernie will come first. That's the pattern we've seen over the years in Vermont, and that's what we're seeing now nationally. Old what a stupid dirty thing to, Bernie. to sling at Bernie as if Elizabeth Warren isn't going to react the same way. Well, public- like if it comes between Elizabeth Warren's uh, you know, election as president, and a friendship with Bernie Sanders. What do you think Elizabeth Warren's going to go? You know, I could have been president, but gosh darn it, I was just so. That's so, not even hypothetical because she's such the one a big who, friend of Bernie's that I snake. just let him have it. You know, she's the one who already attacked him. Right. This article's framing it like he came at her. She's a it was the other snake. way around. She had a spontaneous recollection of a conversation that probably never happened. Yeah, the conversation. Was- oh man, you know what? Just before Iowa, I remember this really horrible thing Bernie said. Uh, you know, what he said was he said a uh, woman can never be president. He's actually quite sexist, if you ask me. And Bernie pulls a sexism out of nowhere. Oh, my God, he hits Warren with sexism. Oh, what a piece of shit he is. And Warren goes down. 
The Bernie bros have triumphed yet again, destroying the fabric of American life and culture. Donald Trump will have four more years. Nobody liked him. Yeah, but yes, Bernie. Now, this is another thing we covered on Flash Friday. Yeah, we've stuff, already covered but, uh, this, but... But Hillary's ludicrous comments. Her, her, Hillary just taking a pot shot at Bernie. Like I said, you know, as, as as Sanders has surged in the polls, the Democratic establishment is the old yard is coming out going, no, Bernie. Now, yeah, I'm, now, I mean, with, with even the threat hanging over, like, maybe even Obama might step into the ring and say, Bernie is wrong for this country. Yeah, they trot out Hillary. They're going to see if that works. When yeah. that obviously fails. Will Hillary quell it? I mean, if, if Hillary is an internal term, I'm thinking that people have largely given up on the fact that we're going to be able to sell fucking Hillary Clinton to people. Well, also, Hillary Clinton calling someone a career politician that nobody likes. Like, I, I mean, mean it's like, I don't, do you you're aware that uh, Bernie Sanders is not that no creature you see on the opposite end of the mirror, right? Yeah, no self-awareness in that statement at all. Hillary is ridiculous. You know, she, and like one of the things people have talked about, and I saw like, um, I, think, I think it was me and you were watching it, maybe TJ about secular talks talking about, you know, Hillary was this big unifier, like, oh, we need to unify the party. And now it's like. Oh, we don't. We, I can't get behind Sanders. Of course, she's walked that back a little bit. Oh, well, you know, whoever the nominee is, I would, I would, of course, support them. But she doesn't want to support Bernie. She fucking can't stand Bernie. She's convinced. That's, like, it's, that's one of the principal reasons she's convinced she didn't win, was that if Bernie had just stepped aside and just bent the knee at me, like, yes, Hillary, my lord, I will support you. And, it, and it's not done any good. And even when Bernie did that and said, you know what, even though the DNC done stole it from me, I'm still going to bend the knee out of unity. <laughs> So the only person that believes in unity is Bernie Sanders. Hillary is just a fucking goddamn shill, and she doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't care. She doesn't want Bernie to win. She wants the establishment to win. If she can't have it, they might as well get it. So she can stay fat and happy and in power, and people can continue to turn to her and go, what does Hillary think? Uh, she's got enough money to be fat and happy without being in power. Bernie Sanders' use of Joe Rogan endorsement sparks debate. The campaign didn't need to amplify it. Because oh, why yeah. would you want why would you want to amplify an, the endorsement of one of the most popular people yeah. in America? One of the most popular podcasters in the world. I mean, the number two podcast for two years running. Seven. I think Joe Rogan currently has hugely seven, influential figure. He has seven point two like eight million you know YouTube followers. He has yeah. tons everywhere. Everyone knows who the fuck Joe Rogan. Why is. would you want that endorsement, huh? Why would you want it? Just reject it. Be like, yeah, no, we don't like it. We don't want it. No thanks. Yeah, tens of millions of downloads a month. Uh, yeah, Rogan is a popular but controversial figure to you. Oh, no, not controversial. He's outspoken in his views and does not self-censor as oh, we my all God. should. No, no! And his guest choice, guest of choice sometimes reflects this no-holds-barred style. Oh, my God, no. It sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> this is the most insipid writing, dude. <laughs> However, this approach have, have earned, I'm, I has love... earned many fans as well as critics, TJ. Ugh. So if you go down, I think it shows the um, what he talks about it. Uh, go down a little bit. Keep going. And it's just, and it's not even like a fucking, really like a fucking powerful fucking endorsement. It's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'll probably vote for Bernie, I guess. I don't know. I'll make you play it if you want. If you don't want to, then we don't have to. Uh, that's kind of risky. We'll at least leave it alone. But uh, I mean, he, he, but he says it right here what he says. I think I'll probably vote for Bernie. He's been insanely consistent his entire life. He's basically saying the same thing, been saying the same thing his whole life. And that, in the end, in, in and of itself, is a very powerful structure to operate from. That's what Joe Biden said. I'm sorry. That's what Joe, no. What the hell, <laughs> Joe, dude? Joe Rogan said. No, no they have similar that. names. Whatever. That's what Joe Rogan oh, said. No. Uh, and but like literally, Joe Rogan was was uh, trending yesterday. I don't know when people are going to see this episode. We should probably try to rush this one out because you know obviously it's pretty topical. But um, when it, I saw Joe Rogan twen- trending yesterday, and it was literally like a bunch of fucking neoliberal fucking twats. Oh, we're getting to that. If you scroll down, okay. Yeah. Let's show it, then. Where oh, is no, it? Right there, uh, right after that image of Joe Rogan. Oh, okay. So here, the campaign's decision to cut a uh, video of Rogan's endorsement and use it divided Sanders supporters. No, it didn't. It did not. Div- no, shut up. It did not divide Sanders supporters. It, div- it fucking pissed off a bunch of neoliberals who hate Sanders to begin with. I really like Bernie, and I'm disappointed to see the campaign boost Rogan, uh-huh. who has made some very anti-trans comments. I really hope the campaign reconsiders. Shut up. Wrote activist uh, Alexis Goldstein on Twitter responding to the video posted by Sanders. Cartoonist Eli Valley tweeted, seconded. Rogan can vote for whomever he wants, but I don't think the Bernie campaign should be touting tra- a transphobic creep who gives a platform to Nazis. Nazis, man. He talk, he'll talk to anybody. God, how Crazy dare. wild man. Oh my God, he's insane. Another Twitter user responded to Valley, so not even anyone of note. 
Rogan has a, quote, massive audience with idiosyncratic views, many of which Sanders can uniquely appeal to among Democrats. It's precisely a piece of the case for why he's stronger against Trump than other Dems. It's playing to win. Well, that's actually a positive I know. comment. But a Valley replied, but Rogan already touted Bernie to his massive audience. The campaign didn't need to amplify it on its feed, which isn't directed at Rogan's audience at any event. Uh, <laughs> what? Heather Fortune, a musician, tweeted, Joe Rogan sucks. Bernie's campaign is just using the endorsement to get his message through to Rogan's audience. This is politics 101, folks. Yeah, I mean, she's right about that. I don't really agree with the Joe Rogan sucks part. I like Joe Rogan. But this fucking, yeah, I mean, like, of course you're going to amplify that. Like, no one gave a shit when he fucking took Cardi B's endorsement, even though she's a fucking moron. Who cares? Dude? I mean, like, who gives a shit? Take what you can get. It's a political goddamn campaign. You're not going to take the fucking endorsement of someone who's fucking famous and influential? Everybody does it. It's commonplace. Yeah, but it's all that basically Joe Rogan's transphobic. Oh, yeah, I saw this one person. He showed a, they showed a, uh, a picture of, of Joe Rogan complaining about uh, the Dukes of Hazard being removed from the air because of the, uh, the, the rebel flag on their car. And he was like, that's not even the real contribution of the show. It's them Daisy Dukes. And they're like, look, racism and sexism in the oh, same God. post. This is who Bernie Sanders pals around with. Look the at this. police are just constantly combing through everything that's said. Oh, no, a comedian made a joke. I mean, no. I say the article. Rogan, no. Joe, Joe Rogan doesn't self-censor. He should know better than to actually have an opinion. He should censor his opinion to, for his, the suitability of others around him. I, I, I hate that I live in an age where doesn't self-censor is viewed as some sort of negative fucking attribute. Uh, to this crowd, it is. So, TJ, how about this one? He doesn't watch what he says at every moment to protect my sensibilities. Fuck him. So, TJ, <laughs> you, you probably didn't know this, dude, but just like Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders wants to cut Social Security. Oh, wow. You know that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Adjustments. <gasps> oh, my God. He wants urged Social Security adjustments. Well, just like Biden. Just They're like Biden. Oh, my God. Bernie's a hypocrite. Bernie's a hypocrite, y'all. This comes from Bloomberg. From Bloomberg, the unbiased yeah. source that's owned by one of his fucking competitors. Oh, my God. So Bernie Sanders is locked in an escalating feud with Joe Biden over whether the former vice president has advocated cutting Social Security, a program considered sacrosanct by many Democrats. Spoiler, he did. Uh, but Sanders himself once used language that was very similar to uh -oh. Biden's. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. While running for re-election in 1996, then-Congressman Sanders said at a news conference that the Social Security system had been adjusted before. And adjustments will have to be made again. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Totally negative. You know what? Cut it. So, you know, you, do you understand? Do you want to know what this, uh, what Bernie Sanders was talking about there? Do you know, Scotty? Yeah, the fact that he wants to cut Social Security down to zero. No. No, do you know what, do you know what he was actually talking about? Adjusting no, TJ. more money into the system to ensure it remains yeah. solid. Well, here's what he was. Cost of living adjustments. No. This, what he wanted to do was because you're only taxed on Social Security for the first $100,000 of your income. And he wanted to raise the cap so that, because right now, like someone making like $20 million and someone who makes $100,000 are paying the exact same amount. Correct. And Bernie wanted to get rid of that so that they had to pay Social Security on all their earned income so that he would have put more money into Social Security. And the news media is trying to frame it like, oh, he was saying he wants to cut it. He was talking about putting more money into it. Right. You lying, fucking, nitwit, cocksucker, motherfucker, asshole, pieces of useless, subhuman shit! What are you talking about, TJ? This is Bloomberg. <laughs> They're just being fair, man. <laughs> oh. And it's laughable that... I love it. This, I love it! This is laughable. This would be the line of attack to come out. Like, mm. like 25 years ago, if you... Like, hey, twist, by the way, Jennifer. If you, if, hey, Jennifer, any relation? Oh, shit, dude. Oh, snap. Motherfucker. Where's he hiding, Jennifer? <sighs> Disgusting. Disgraceful. I mean, e even if that's what Bernie was saying, which he wasn't, that happened fucking, that's like 20 years ago. 
And I know, I know you can say, oh, same thing about Joe Biden, but Joe Biden is going on the record. No, numerous- Joe Biden wants Joe Biden wanted to cut it. He wanted to raise the age of eligibility. And he, he wanted to do all kinds of shit. And he said it a ton of times. It's not just one time that Joe Biden, oh, there's one clip. Like, Joe Biden is repeatedly trying to cut these programs. Bernie Sanders was talking about adjusting it upward. He was talking about putting more money into it. To Joe protect Biden its existence. To right. make sure that it remained yeah. able to pay people out. How does anyone... So, it's just so crazy. So, on one side of his mouth, Bernie's saying all this stuff about... We need to strengthen Social Security, but the other side, it's like cut it, cut it out, cut it. They're not it's even pathetic. trying to make. They're not even trying to make the case that he said to cut it. They're trying to make the case that the the word adjustment. Well, because if you go down, go go down a little bit in the yeah. article, yeah, they basically explain it. If you go down a little bit, yeah. Uh, uh, while running for re-election in 1996, the congressman, then Congressman Sanders, said at a news conference, Social Security system had been adjusted before, and adjustments had to be made again. The Sanders campaign has assailed Biden for saying Social Security was in need of adjustments in a 2018 speech. With chief policy advisor Warren, Go- they act like the context for this isn't out there. Context doesn't exist anymore. Just, it doesn't matter. The fact that Bernie Sanders was talking about expanding the revenue stream to Social Security, and Joe Biden was talking about the exact fucking opposite, just doesn't matter. Yeah, they're because to- we're just gonna have a little squabbling, pissing semantics game over the word adjusted. Because Joe Biden can't defend his record. Joe Biden can't fucking run on his policies. He, the only thing he's running on is vague platitudes and he's fucking surviving getting on the stage and saying that the right, enough of the right things. To have a bunch of people say, let's prop up Joe Biden. And yeah, whatever. He might be seen high. He might be losing his mind. His teeth might be falling out of his mouth. He might have a bloodshot eye. He might not have any fucking idea where he is, but he represents stability. St- yeah, because that seems <laughs> awful stable <laughs> you know, to me. Like, it's like, what the fuck? What Amazing. What, what Amazing what stability. In? Holy shit. Isn't it astounding? Isn't it wonderful? Bernie Sanders' resurgence is bad for America's health. Because if we get Medicare for all, TJ, say goodbye to your health. Say there. goodbye to everything you love. So, of course, also attacking his health just three months after suffering what many thought was a campaign-ending heart attack. Now, what it, many hoped. Hoped yeah, was please, your fucking... Oh, let Bernie be dead. Oh, please, let Senator Bernie... Senator Bernie Sanders is on a roll. According to the latest polls, he leads nominal frontrunner Joe Biden in California is with a percentage point in both Iowa and New Hampshire. On top of all that, his campaign is bringing record amounts of donor cash and small amounts mainly from individuals. But what's good for Sanders isn't good for the United States of America. His signature policy proposal, Medicare for All, would destroy America's world-class health care system. Oh, my God, no. It's the best system. Not our world-class health care system. Just show this don't. broken system. And Please the don't do it. it oh, my God, our world-class system. It's so good. I okay. love it, man. Every time I see our health care system, I'm just like, wow, this the system is great. Man, that 700 fucking whatever dollars I pay every month for the worst fucking health coverage ever, that's so cool. But TJ, look. I love that. That's so effective for me. As I showed earlier, Bernie's friend, the New York Times. So a recent New York Times profile detailed how Sanders became first infatuated with government-run health care in 1987. When he visited Canada to, quote, observe firsthand the government-backed universal model that he strongly suspects was better. In three decades since, Canada's version of Medicare for All has steadily crumbled. Oh, no. At great financial and human costs. Oh, wow, yeah. Advocates of government-run single pale health care argue that the scheme can guarantee universal coverage at cost affordable to taxpayers. But Canada's experience doesn't really support the claim. Health spending has climbed 155% since Sanders first visited, after adjusting for infl- inflation. Today, health spending accounts for nearly 12% of Canada's GDP, TJ. Good. If it needs to be more, it should be more. <laughs> so 12% of their GDP. What is They're waiting, TJ. What percentage of our GDP do we spend on fucking uh, foreign military adventures and shit? Uh, and weapons development. Like 30? But TJ, listen to the disaster system, TJ. Oh, okay. Despite the steady upward march of spending, the quality of Canada's system has declined. Oh, no. The country has fewer than three hospital beds for every thousand people. That puts it in the bottom fifth amongst OED, OECD nations. Oh, by the way, are those other OC, OECD nations, are they all, they're all using uh, private health insurance, right? Yes. None uh, of those other ones that are doing better are using TJ. universal health care systems, right? Well, let's talk about waiting. That's the big thing. Okay. Since Canada's health care system lacks adequate resources, it can't treat pa- patients in a timely manner. As a result, wow. TJ, yeah. wait times have skyrocketed. In 2019, Canadians have waited a median of 20.9 weeks to receive a specialist treatment. Holy shit. After getting referred by a general practitioner, according to the Fraser Institute, a Canadian think tank. Wow, that's amazing. That's 124% higher than the median wait in 1993 when Frazier began tracking wait time. So if Bernie went there now, TJ, 
If he went there today, he would see a system collapsing under the weight of a bureaucracy, TJ. Oh, man, no. Yeah. No. But wait. I mean, if he could even get there without tripping over all the people who are in bankruptcy due to medical debt. Yeah. Oh, wait. Actually, wait a minute. He Bernie, won't bump into any of those Bernie, in Canada. Bernie went to Canada. Right, remember? Yeah, he went to Canada recently. To buy insulin because, because, a bunch he of people, couldn't, because people couldn't afford it here. In our world-class system, which leaves people out in the cold for a drug they need to stay alive. But, you know, that's okay. Look, uh, wait times in America are fine. They're not bad. Like, if you look at the fucking, uh, co- the, all, the, all the countries of the world, I mean, like, you can see a chart here. So, is the, but if the argument's being made that we need a, that any system yeah, that's replaced this one. Open. Here we go. It, but it, it, it's just such a bad argument. It's like any system that replaced the American system has to be perfect or we can't do it. Let me just look at this. Let me just look at this. So here you have wait times for specialist appointment less than four weeks, two months or more. And yeah, a lot of these countries that are two months or more. Oh, the UK. Oh, wait, the UK is faster than us. Oh, man. So I mean, like we have uh, we're doing. So these are percentages, 80 percent. Uh, like six percent in the U.S. So Switzerland two months or more. In the U.K. have the have Canada the, does have high wait times. It, it does. does, but look at all these countries that are totally comparable to us. In fact, some of that are uh, above us. Like the Netherlands is doing well. Switzerland is doing well. Uh, the the UK, UK is, is doing well. Germany's comparable. Germany's doing well. Sweden's doing well. Australia's doing well. like plenty of places are doing just fine on wait times with a universal health care system, but they focus on Canada's one big fucking weakness. Like it's like they cherry pick the problems of of this universal healthcare system or that universal healthcare system to just argue against the entire concept. Meanwhile, let's pretend our system's perfect. Yeah. Let's pretend it doesn't create massive debt. It creates not only massive healthcare debt but massive credit card debt as people use their credit cards to pay for their fucking healthcare. It's, there's a massive level of inequality that these other systems. I mean, maybe they experience to some degree, but not anywhere nearly as bad as the system we have. But no, it's a disaster for America if we were to get a universal health care system, if we were to have single payer. I mean, it works in all these other countries. It works in every other major country on the fucking face of the earth. But it's not going to work here just, because magic reasons. See, we can't just rip up what we've done before. We have to build on it. Remember, that's what they say. It's too radical. It's too crazy. It just won't fucking work here, TJ. Maybe in fucking the UK or Have you Norway. seen this meme recently where it's like uh, they, they show the candidates with the, you know, the poop in the soup? Uh, analogy no. where it has like Bernie Sanders is like, I think we need to get rid of the soup. There's poop in it. And the other candidate's like, now Bernie's get rid of the soup strategy is really kind of fucking just extreme. Out. I think we could just, you know, put a little salt and pepper in it, you know, some different seasonings and stir it up a little bit. You won't even notice the poop is there. You'll still be eating shit. I mean, man, fuck this. It'll be flavored shit though. Fuck this country. Fuck this media. Ugh. We gotta get the fuck out of here. It's time to go. Let's get out of this country. Sweden, you guys want to go to Sweden, Norway? Oh no, dude, we I don't would think destroy they want there. Us. Denmark, I don't know. There's gotta what be something. What we add to Sweden? You know what I mean? Yeah. We're just gonna there. We're just gonna subtract all their great social health programs and not. Yeah. Put I don't know, dude. I don't Sweden. think anywhere in the world wants us. Yeah, Maybe Japan. True. Japan does definitely. They, they want, want us, us, dude. No. We'll just convince them that we're washed up '80s rock. Australia stars. would accept us. Yeah, yeah, but that's on fire. We'll I don't know if I want to be on fire. Then, Paul. Damn, he wants to fucking burn to death. It's going to be some cheap real estate in the coming future. Ah. You know I mean? Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right. See what I'm saying? Be yeah. on the, we're on the world's biggest fucking island resort. Plus, Australia. All, those, all that fire is going to make the soil there super fertile. So It's going to be it's rich true. soil. Yeah. It's true. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Good day, mates. That's Good day, all, mates. Well, we're coming to Australia. We'll see you there. Bye-bye. See ya.